Hi everyone, welcome. This is uh, part two of my basic async web scraping guide using G requests. Um, I did part one a week or so ago. I'll link to that down below if you want to watch that first. However, we're going to cover mostly the same sort of thing, but this time we're going to be using a more of a real world example, whereas last time we were just using the testing scraping site. So the code that I wrote last time is here. We can see that I have imported BS4. We're using that for passing and G requests, which is what we're going to be using to get our requests uh, done asynchronously. This is possibly the easiest async library for request making I and mean, it doesn't give you a whole host of options and it's possibly not the best one to use all the time but it kind of gives you an idea of what's possible and what can do it what what you can achieve and it does it works reasonably well. So you can see I've got three functions here for creating my URL list and then getting the data and returning that and then passing through. So we're basically going to copy the sort of same sort of structure we're going to be doing on a real world exercise. Now this is obviously for educational purposes only, but I'm going to be scraping this site. Now on this page in this category, there are 10 plus pages of products, each with a name, a stock or a available type uh, option and a price. Now some of them have um, discounted prices, but for the sake of simplicity, we're going to be ignoring that and we're going to be just going ahead and getting the main price. You can see these are discounted, but we're just going to go ahead and get the main price uh, for now for the sake of that, like I said, simplicity. So I'm going to copy the URL up here and we'll see that if I go to a new file, you can see that it's got and page is equal to one at the end. So that means to me that that will be nice and easy for us to do with pagination. Okay, so I'm going to copy these and we're going to import them. We're going to be using Beautiful Soup, as I said, and G requests. And I've got this get URLs function. So I'm going to copy that over here too. And don't worry, all the code will be on my GitHub link down below for you. And then back to the URL, which I copied and then uncopied by copying something else. So again, I'm going to use F strings and I'm going to put our X in there. I'm going to make this one smaller, actually, it's a bit easier for me to work with. Um, but you can see all I'm doing here is I'm creating a list of URLs by doing a X in range from um, doing the X in range just to generate the pages for us. So this is going to return a list of URLs all like this, but with the page number on the end. And for the sake of arguments, I'm going to do one to five for the moment, which will give us four pages, which will be enough for us to work with. The next thing that we need to do is we need to write our G request function. Again, this is very similar. So I'm going to copy this out here and I'm going to put it in here. So all we're saying here is that it's going to basically take all of the request URLs that we give it in the list that we're generating here. It's going to uh, asynchronously send out all the requests whilst waiting for the, the page to return the response. And then it's going to store the response back in this RESP response variable that we get. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to run this. I'm going to print out the get data of the URLs and I'm going to first generate the list. I'm going to call it URLs and I'm going to say get URLs. There's a lot of URLs going on here and that should be enough for us. So all this is going to do is it's going to take the URLs and it's going to return and we should get responses back. You can see here I've got one, two, three, four responses all 200s, that's all good responses back. So that to me, I can see that this is working. Um, we have all the content of each response stored in a variable in a list, which is how it works asynchronously. Uh, you might find that these could be in any order. They won't necessarily be page one, two, three, and four. It just depends on which one responds quickest. So I'm gonna change this now to eight and run it again. And hopefully we get eight good responses back, which we do. Sorry, we'll get seven because it's one, two, eight. So now that that is working and nice and good, I'm going to go ahead and go back to five just because this is for education, as I said, so we don't need to hammer this, this, these people's server for no reason. So to do the passing part, we're going to want to do a couple of things. I'm going to be using beautiful soup. You can use whatever parser you like for HTML. I know that this page works with this this method. So I'm going to use the inspect element tool just to get the right HTML elements and the data out that we want. If you're looking at a website and you are not sure whether that's working or not, go ahead and view the page source. And what I like to do is search for something specific on this page. 
Um, let's type in venture prospector. So if we search in the source for venture prospector, we can see that we have lots of response, lots of uh, elements. There's eight different um, ones that we can see that have this name in. And this one here, if I just highlight over that, you can see that is in a div class product grid item info. We have a span class product grid item price here. And we can see this one is including tax 1435 and then there's one that's excluding tax now looking at this right away what i think i'm going to do is use this one here to get the name we're going to be taking this stock available one as well and then what we'll do is we'll just grab uh, this here so to, an easy way to do this is just to chain these two together so let's get started so the first thing i'm going to do is i want this product grid item info because that I guess is where all of the data is going to be for every single product if I zoom in a bit on here and if we scroll to our uh, actually just select element there we go let's find that the grid uh, and then keep going down the tree keep going we can see that we now have all of the products here but a good tip is instead of trying to get each one of these, just keep going down a bit further and down a bit further until you find something that, that might be easier like this one here. So there's the grid item info. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that and we're going to come back to our code and we're going to write a new function and we're going to call it pass. If I can spell, thank you. And we are going to give it the response that is returned uh, from here. And then we want to do what we want to do now is we want to say for R in response because remember when we did our get data with G requests, we actually returning a list. So we got all of those responses I showed you earlier. They were in a list. So for each one of those in the list, we're going to do the passing. Now we can't use Beautiful Soup uh, to pass asynchronously. So what we're doing is we're actually going to grab all the data first, which is the responses I showed you asynchronously because that's the thing that takes the time uh, that slows us down when we're web scraping multiple pages um, and then we're going to take each response within that and pass the information out really quick that's a cpu intensive task which should be super fast on my incredibly fast computer and then what we're going to do is we're just going to print it all out to the screen uh, and maybe we'll maybe we'll export it to csv at the end uh, okay so we want to do for r in response and let's say sp is equal to beautiful soup and we want to go r.text and let's just use the lxml lmxl which one is it i've written it in here lxml the other way around i never get this right there we go so what we can do now is we want to say that the let's just call it product is equal to uh, sp for soup dot find all and it was a div and the class was what I copied product grid item info. So all we're doing here is we're storing every single element that's got that information in that we want into a product list, which we are then going to loop through and pass out the bits that we want. So we can do for item in product and let's just print item dot find. And I believe it was an A tag. Let's double check. Underneath, it was an A tag with, uh, it's actually the first A tag in the list. So all I'm going to do then is I'm going to do find all, and I'm going to say A, so we're going to find all of the MOOCs, although I think there was three different A tags in there. And we're just going to index it with zero to find the first one. That saves us messing around with the class or anything like that. We can just get all of them, and then we can get the first one, and then let's do dot text, and then dot strip. So hopefully now if we run our pass function under here onto the response that we're going to say we get that we are storing from our get data and if we pass that data here we should be able to print out a load of titles of the stock. There we go. So you can see that whiz by really quick. So that is uh, four, four pages worth of product titles that took our uh, a second or so to scrape let's carry on and grab the price and if we see that here it is under another a tag but then under a span uh, there we go and product item item grid price so i'm going to copy that and i'm going to say 
let's change this from print now. Let's save that, that we know that that works. So let's call that title. And then let's call this one price. And it was item.find, forgotten already. It is a span with a class, okay. Span. And we'll call our dictionary for class and we'll print that in there. And if we tell, uh, if when we check here, we can see that we have two um, span tags underneath it and they have two separate values. Now, if we were to just print the text of this, we would get both out, which we don't want. We want the one that's including of the tax price. So what I'm going to do is again, I'm just going to chain these together and we'll say dot find again because we're going to find this element first and then we're going to find the next one and it was a span and in fact because there were multiple ones let's do find all because we want to find all of them because we can return the list and then let's just return zero dot text dot strip and hopefully if i print title and price now we should get and i'm just going to reduce this down just to one page so we don't we can see easy enough should get all the prices as well there we go so this is the including the tax price which is the one that we were after so that has worked nice and easily for us whilst we're here we might as well get the availability of the product why not so to do that i'm going to see we have a availability value yep that's the one we want so i'm going to copy this long tag here and i'm going to say underneath our price we just do avail is equal to item.find and it was a span again with the class class of this and we want dot text again and dot strip so then we can do print the availability as well and there we go we've got all the information that we were after so all we've done here is we are taking the list of responses that we are generating from our asynchronous G requests request uh, method for the all the URLs that we generated and we're going through uh, and the only thing that's slightly slightly different to anything normal here is basically just chaining these together um, I much prefer CSS selectors these days however you know it's nice to keep in touch with everything see how it all keeps working keep my skills going so we're going to use this one in this case to make this a bit more realistic i'm going to carry on and i'm going to create a a dictionary that we're going to return for every single one of these that then we can then export to csv so let's do um let's do product uh let's call this one product actually and i'm going to change the name of this Let's remove the print statement as well after here. And I'm going to say this one, I'm going to call items. There we go. So now we can change this to a key. So keys go into uh, quote marks. There we go. And then our value for our dictionary is going to be the element text that we were scraping. And at the end of these, we need commas like this and now we have a dictionary and I think that that should work so now if we print product we should get a nice dictionary for every single one that has all the information in there we go which we do so we can see that we have the title the price and the availability in a dictionary so up here we can say our product list is equal to a blank list and then we can do, let's delete this, product.append, product, oh, done that the wrong way around. We need to append the product to the list, not the other way around. There we go. And then we can say, um, I'd like to put a print statement in here. So we can just say, let's do print, and we'll just do added, uh, let's just do the product. We might, yeah, let's just add the. Let's just do product. You know, add the whole thing. That should be fine. Um, and then we can return our product list. So this is quite long-winded, um, but it should work just fine. So now, if I run this again, we should get 
our text again added those items perfect and now if we want to save this um, product list that we are returning from our pass function I'm just going to collapse these ones for now we want to save that into a variable that we can then do something with but I'm actually going to export this to CSV. That's all I want. So I'm going to import pandas as PD, which is my favorite way to export things by using the pandas data frame. Some people might say it's overkill. I just find it really easy and nice and simple to work with. So I'm going to say our DF is equal to PD dot data frame for capitals passing of the response and then I'm going to print df.head and we should get a whole data frame of all of the items here so we can see that we are returning this is just the first part the top when you print the head you print the default is five the top five items so that has worked brilliantly I think I might remove this print statement I will leave it in for now we'll leave it in for now now that I know that the data frame works, I'm going to do df.2 CSV and we'll just call this uh, canoes.csv and all as always I do index is equal to false because I do not want the default panda index on my CSV file. I just want the data. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let's collapse that down. Let's generate a few more pages of information. Let's do up to six, do one to six, and we'll run this and we should get all of that data back almost instantly. There we go. And now we should have all that in our CSV file, canoes.csv. Close that down. And that was 120 products scraped in, um, I don't know how, how long. A second or so we don't even need to time that to know that that was super quick so imagine doing that synchronously page by page by page it's going to take at least a second or so per page and we've done it in a fraction of that time again let's put that up let's do 11s let's get 10 pages and hopefully there's no issues all done and again now we have all of that time all that small amount of time and we've got all the way down here and we've got 228 products so hopefully you guys get a really good gist of how uh, async can work and how it can speed up your web scraping now it can't always speed up your passing although I've got a future video that will have request HTML which can actually pass the data asynchronously it gets a bit more complicated um, but that but hopefully once you understand what you can and can't do with this, then moving on to request HTML async shouldn't be too difficult for you. Although we do need to talk about coroutines and things like that, but I'll do my best to explain those in the next video. But this way we've managed to just quickly and easily scrape this data using G requests. But that's it for this one, guys. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If this is the sort of content that you're interested in, I would highly recommend that you subscribe to my channel. I have got loads of web scraping content on already and more to come. Um, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up, leave me a comment and thank you very much. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.